Swiggity Swag, what's in the bag? Jay here bringing you guys my review for Pokemon Dark Rising 2. So as you guys already know, but you might not know because you're new around here, and if you are new around here, what I do after every LP of a ROM hack here on the channel, I do a review of the game to give you guys an overall idea on the game, give you guys what I think is good about the game, what I think is bad about the game, and my overall opinion on the game. And then I turn it over to you guys in the comment section asking you guys, have you played the game? What do you think the game did well? What do you think the game did badly? What do you think the game can improve on? Do you like the game? Do you not like the game? If you've never played the game before, do you want to play the game now that you've seen me review the game and play the game? and all that good stuff in the comment section. But I hope you guys do enjoy this video and enjoy this review. If you guys do, don't forget to hit the like button down below to show your support here on the video and on the channel. But without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into this review of Dark Rising 2. So starting off with the good things about Dark Rising 2, one good thing about the game is the story. Now I heard a lot of people complain that the story was very anime. And that's true, it is very anime because the story boils down to you and your group of friends are trying to stop the ultimate evil and you're the chosen one, or you're one of the chosen ones. And that, that's literally it. That's literally the story of Dark Rising 2. And it's not a bad story at all. It's actually a very interesting story just because of the character development in the story, which is also another thing I really liked about the game was like your character just kind of like developed as you went along, you know, like this is one of those games where you actually do the talking as well. And it's really nice. It's really nice to see that. But you get to see you, how your character progresses from the first games into the second game. And it's just it's, it's really like I said, it's really nice to see. But the overall story of Dark Rising 2, it's a great story. It's, it's a really good story. Yeah, the enemy is completely OP, but it's a really nice story. So, uh, it, it, like, every time I recorded a part of Dark Rising 2, I always wanted to know what would happen next. Like, what's going to happen at the end of the game? Like, what's going to actually happen? Like, I think those kind of games are really nice. You know, I think those kind of stories are really nice. It gets you to play the game and continue to play the game until you beat it. Another thing I liked about the game was the physical special split. Now, if you guys don't know what that means, before Generation 4, uh, Pokemon moves were physical and special based on the type of the move. So, for example, every evolution's typing and Dragon were all special moves. So, Dragon Claw was special, Fire Punch was special, Blaze Kick special, Thunder Punch, Ice Punch, moves that normally would be physical because they make physical contact, they were special moves back in generation three and below and then every other typing was physical but with the introduction of physical special split in generation four moves were physical and special based on if they made physical contact or not which actually made a lot of pokemon that were normally useless really really good and a lot of us are more used to these newer mechanics because we play generations four five six and seven time and time again and so that that way we don't have to make that transition from Gen 4 mechanics to Gen 3 mechanics because you know Gen 4 mechanics are already in Dark Rising 2 so the transition is a lot easier to make and it makes the game a lot easier to play and I really really like the fact that physical special split is in Dark Rising 2. Another thing I liked about Dark Rising 2 was the fact that we had later generation mods in an early generation game. So Dark Rising 2 is a ROM hack of Pokemon Fire Red which is technically a generation 3 game and we got to see generation four five and six pokemon in this game and i think it's really cool to see old, uh, later generation mons in early generation games because it's like whoa what it's like it's one of those questions where it's like whoa what if greninja was in gen 3 what if delphox was in gen 3 yada 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 well now we have that and it just makes it a lot cooler and you know not only that but we all know unknown is a thing right and they usually replace the sprites with unknown there's like 20 something unknowns so you can add this many pokemon and then you know take out some of the useless pokemon that no one ever uses and add some really cool mons in there as well and it's just it makes the game more fun to play because you know i get to use a talent flame in a gen 3 game you know it's like yeah i love talent flame i want to use talent flame i get to use talent flame you know haxorus i like haxorus i got to use a haxorus in dark rising 2 and i think that was really cool another thing i liked about the game was the game gave you access to a lot of legendary pokemon i mean like arceus 
Latios, Latias, Dialga, Palkia, uh, Keldeo, Terrakian, Kabalian, uh, Verizian, you know, whatever. You got so many legendary Pokemon in the game. And it's not even like they were crappy legendaries either. They were really good legendaries. Latios, Latias had the Soul Dew. I mean, Kabalian, Terrakian are already good. In, like they're already good. Dialga's really good. Palkia's really good. Keldeo is really good. You just got really, really good legendaries in the game. And I just like the fact that you had access to a lot of these legendary Pokemon. Another thing I thought that was really interesting about the game, but I liked about the game, was the fact that Pokemon learned like move tutor moves through level up. Like there were times where my Pokemon would learn some up like ridiculous obscure move that normally they would not learn by level up in any other game but they did they learned it by level up. like for example i think one of my Breloom, one of my Breloom, whoa only i only had one Breloom. my Breloom tried to learn like stone edge or something and i was like it doesn't get that by level up at all like ever how what, what is happening here but the thing about it is that you get a lot more like diverse move sets you can you get coverage for your weaknesses you know it learns stone edge because it's weak to flying and fire so it has some sort of coverage obviously you probably wouldn't keep Breloom in on a fire type because that would be kind of ridiculous but hey you have the move so just in case you end up in that situation well you have coverage now because you learned it by level up but i think it's really cool that these pokemon got like move to the moves and egg moves and stuff like that through level up another thing i liked about the game this is probably a small thing but i like the fact that there were characters in the game like paul don iris you know gary etc there were anime characters in the game and it just made the game a little bit more refreshing you know and not only that but they also stayed true to their teams you know for example uh dawn had even though dawn would normally have a pip love she had empoleon togekiss typhlosion lalopany pachirisu whatever you know and paul had electivire like glide score he had he had all his normal mons as well because i've played games where they literally changed up the entire team of some of the characters in the anime or whatever like for example i played pokemon like pitch black pure white or whatever right and you battle cynthia and cynthia has like a yuxi a latias uh just crazy mons and then she still has her garchomp but she has all these wild mons and it's like why <laughs> why didn't we just stay true to her team man like that, that would have been really really good you know so i like the fact that they stay true to the anime characters teams and the last thing I liked about the game was the character development. I think I talked about this when talking about the story, talking about how characters develop through the story, but the character development in the game is, is so nice because, you know, our character in Dark Rising 1, we are literally thrown into this wild story where we have to stop the ultimate evil after getting our first Pokemon. And it's, it's, it's crazy, right? And in Dark Rising 2, we're still trying to stop this evil but you know we get like consumed with negativity ourselves and now we're trying to destroy anything that stops us from trying to destroy the ultimate evil and it, like in turn we're sort of becoming quote unquote evil and we get to see the development in that we get to see in the friendship bonds and stuff we get to see how characters have grown up you know throughout the story of dark rising one and two and I think that's really cool. So enough of the good things about the game. Let's go ahead and move on to the bad things about the game. And one bad thing about the game, at least for me, was that the game had a really, really rough start. It's like a really rough start. For, okay, so let me let me explain. Let me explain. So you get your starter. It's a fully evolved pseudo legendary dragon that's level 10 and has a pretty good move set. All right. But even with this really, really, really good start, your first important battle, they have level 20 Pokemon. Not only that, but they carry an ice type Pokemon and all three starters are quad weak to ice. And so you're required to grind up like 10 plus levels in order to even be remotely on par with you know this important trainer. And then from there, you have to start gauging level spikes, when level spikes are gonna happen, 
and you know it's just really rough at the very beginning of the game and you might have a hard time getting a start but once you get started though once you get started it's actually really easy to predict when a level spike is going to happen but like like i said when you first start the game it's just it's just a little bit rough you know what i'm saying it's just a little bit rough you might end up losing some pokemon or you might end up losing some battles here and there unless you just over level like crazy because why not but you know i don't know for me it was like a really rough start to the game though another thing i didn't necessarily like about the game was the level spikes now the level spikes are manageable once you get started as i said before like once you get the ball rolling it's really easy to predict when there's going to be a spike but with that being said there will be times where you will walk into a house you will talk to somebody and they will want to battle you and then their levels are like significantly higher than yours and so you're not necessarily prepared. You're not prepared for a battle or anything like that, you know? And people might say, you know, well, whenever you enter a new city, you should go to the Pokemon Center first before talking to people in the houses because, you know, that's the best thing to do. But at the same time, it's one of the things where it's like, well, people tell you, go into every house, talk to everybody in the game because you never know what you can get from people in the game. But there are times, like I said, there are times where you will go into a house you will talk to somebody and you're forced into a battle and that poke and that, that person has like a really good pokemon at a really really high level and it's going to be really hard to beat no matter what even with your fully evolved dragon it might not be easy to beat and you know that I, I feel like that's still like a a be like at the start of the game type thing i don't know like eventually you learn to just not talk to people as much uh, when it comes to Dark Rising 2, but I will say that the spikes were much, much better than Dark Rising 1, 100%. I'm telling you, they were way better, okay? In Dark Rising 1, I had six badges, and I had level 100s on my team. I didn't have a level 100 Pokemon in Dark Rising 2 until the end, essentially, and until I had to fight the, you know, Elite Four, uh whatever you know that's when i had a level 100 pokemon and the only reason why i had a level 100 pokemon was so he can get a move so i can essentially win the game because if i didn't have that move well i would have probably gotten waxed at some point you know uh taking on the elite four but uh the level spikes are way more manageable way more predictable in dark rising 2 in dark rising 1 it just felt like everything was everywhere and it just it felt like every time you try to catch up they will skip they will skip ahead and you're just like i you, you can never get ahead in dark rising one in dark rising two you can get at least ahead or on par and i i mean it's a good thing but a bad thing at the same time you know if you know what i'm saying but you know the level spikes i still feel like it could have been a little, done a little bit better though but that's just me another bad thing about the game is stupidly broken pokemon now there are i want to say there are three pokemon or i guess three creatures i don't i really don't even know what the hell to call the ultimate evil like his name is darugus right darugus is severely broken arceus is severely broken now darugus has like two forms there's darugus and darugus s and both of them are pretty broken okay they're base stat total i don't even know what their base stat total are is whatever but they're they're hard to beat you essentially need arceus to beat darugus and that's ridiculous like you need Arceus Arceus is literally mandatory to beat the Rugus. I mean unless like you know you have like a soul do Latios that can like sweep or something someone told me that they swept with a soul do Latios or whatever but um but you essentially need Arceus to beat the unless you're able to get like a Tyranitar as well but I don't even know where you can even get a Larvitar Pupitar or a Tyranitar within Dark Rising 2 but if you can get one get one because like that's probably the only other thing that will swallow hits from you know darugus which is the ultimate evil but like they're broken because Arceus has a move judgment where it's like 200 base power it's stabbed because it, it has no type and Arceus has no type and your boot or your stats boost up by one after you use judgment they made Arceus literally the key to win once you get Arceus you cannot lose the game like you can't there's no way you can lose the game with Arceus because Arceus is that bulky is that strong and is that busted essentially and Dar Darugus is literally the same thing has a move called dark chaos that is 200 base power stab so it's like 300 base power something like that 
and it, it poisons every time it hits. Every time, unless you're a steel type or a poison type, obviously. But um, Darugus is really broken and Arceus is really broken. And I feel like a game can be good without the broken mons, but I feel like Arceus is so mandatory to winning the game, to beating the game, and it kind of makes the game, at least the end of the game, not as fun. Because all you gotta do is just switch in Arceus, click Judgment, or switch in Arceus, click literally anything. You're living a hit because you're Arceus, and it's 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 just GG. And obviously, you can choose to not use the Arceus, but if you choose not to use the Arceus, when you reach the end of the game, it's gonna be relatively hard to beat. I mean, unless, again, you have like a Soul Dude Latios and you're able to set up some Calm Minds or something, I don't know, but essentially, you need Arceus to win. And once you get Arceus, you win the game. Simple as it gets. And I think that kind of takes the fun away from the game itself. And the last bad thing about the game for me was the town layout and the map layouts. I don't know, I don't think there was a single town in Dark Rising 2 where the layout was not weird. Like, I feel like the town layouts were so laid out so weird to where I, I didn't know where Pokemon Center was. It, it took me forever to find a Pokemon Center. Normally when you enter a town, you know where the Pokemon Center is at. Every time I enter a town, I'm like, Where's the Pokemon Center? Where's the Pokemon Center? Where's the Mart? Where am I looking? Where am I walking? You know, there are so many different like pathways in each city and it just makes it, it feels like everything is just like kind of either cluttered or it's just like not organized and it, it made me upset. And then not only that, but when you're trying to fly to certain places or you're trying to like see where you're at on the map, there'll be times where you'll be in Kanto and then you'll go, you know, you'll go two routes and you'll go to the next town, next thing you know, you're on like two island. And you're like, what? And you can't fly off of two island to back to Kanto. And so you're just like, okay, <laughs> I'm stuck here. And or, or the way you get back is you go back through the routes. And it's like, oh, why, 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 why couldn't they just keep everything like in Kanto and then make something else of the one island, two island, whatever. I don't I don't know. It was really weird. It was just a really, really weird thing. And not only that, but you can tell what town used to be like mapped there. For example, you'll walk into a gym and you'll see, oh, this is Blaine's gym. So this used to be Cinnabar Island, but this is now something completely different i don't know but i just feel like the towns could have been laid out a little bit better i feel like the map could have been laid out a little bit better but you know again that's just me now this thing about the game i don't know if it's really a good thing or a bad thing i guess it could be categorized categorized i don't know if that's even a word i think it could be considered both good and bad and that's the ending of the game the ending of the game it's such a plot twist which i would say is a good thing but it's a bad thing because it's completely out of left field. I mean, like, it's probably a WTF moment. You'll play the game, you'll beat the game, you'll get to the ending, and it's like... What? <laughs> like, that, that, that's all I could say was, what? You know, and obviously, the next game, Pokemon Dark Rising, Order Destroyed, or something like that, That's you have to play that in order to, like, understand the ending of Dark Rising 2, but just the ending of Dark Rising 2 itself, it's just such a confusing ending. It's so confusing, it's so weird. It just makes no sense to me how this just out of left field, boom. All right, <laughs> it's literally just, okay. <laughs> All right, well, whatever, man, that's that's cool, bro. That's cool, that's cool. But uh, I, like I said, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, um, but it just kind of, it was just like an iffy thing for me, the ending of the game. I don't know, it's just, that, it's just an iffy thing. So my overall opinion on Dark Rising 2, I will say that I actually enjoyed Dark Rising 2 a lot more than Dark Rising 1. And I would definitely recommend people play Dark Rising 2. Of course, in order to know what's ha happening in Dark Rising 2 and know the characters in Dark Rising 2, you have to play Dark Rising 1. And going through Dark Rising 1 is gonna be really rough, but once you get through Dark Rising 1, that will set you up 
you know, much better in Dark Rising 2 because then you'll have a grasp of the level spikes and you'll have a grasp of how D uh, Dark Rising does things and you should be able to get through Dark Rising 2 much, much better. With that being said, I do not recommend you Nuzlocke the game because mo you probably lose at Darugas, okay? You will probably lose at Darugas. I mean, I think a good 80, a good 70, 80% of people will lose at Darugas because you know, normally you catch Pokemon that you want to catch, right? Yada, yada, yada. Darugus is level certain, certain, certain. Arceus you catch at level blah, 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 which is lower than Darugus, which is blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, you will lose the lock essentially. So I recommend that you don't Nuzlocke the game. I, uh, you know, and you should have a great time with the game to be completely honest. I enjoyed it. I honestly enjoyed Dark Rising 2, 100%. I definitely look forward to playing Order Destroyed so I can figure out what the heck, what that, what that ending was. I, I still don't know what that ending was, but I'm gonna play the next game and figure it out from there. But with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this review of Dark Rising 2. If you guys did, don't forget to hit the like button down below to show your support. In the comment section below, let me know, did you like Dark Rising 2? Did you not like Dark Rising 2? What did you like about it? What did you not like about it? Have you played the game before? If you haven't played the game before, will you play the game now that you know a little bit about the game and you've seen me play the game? All that stuff. Leave that in the comment section below. But thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you guys so much for the support on the series as well because the series did really, really well. So again, thank you guys so much for all of your support on that series. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.